Greetings, welcome to the special edition of Soweto Today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. It is the day two of the 15th BRICS Summit here at the richest square mile in the continent. That's Santon here in Johannesburg. Thanks for making the time. Uh, yesterday, a lot of proceedings at the uh, you know, Santon Convention Center with uh, um, a few speeches uh, you know, by members of the BRICS blog uh, welcoming everyone that is joining in the festivities of the 15th uh, annual summit. We heard uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa just talking about uh, the summit and also just talking about the bilateral relations of uh, what is it that um, he discussed uh, during the um, uh, state visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Just talking about, uh, you know, the need to narrow the trade deficit uh, between South Africa and China and that uh, one of the ways to do this, it is by ensuring great Great, um, uh, you know, market access for value-added South African export goods and to the Chinese market. We know that, uh, um, you know, China has just over 200 companies in operating in South Africa. And in the talks, we're more looking at, uh, you know, how do we get South African companies into China? Uh, you, that, those are some of the things that uh, the president did discuss. So we're going to make sure that uh, we to just take you to that speech just to understand exactly what happened happened uh, during the proceedings here in uh, Santin Convention Center in Johannesburg. BRICS economies have emerged as powerful engines of global growth. Yet the rapid economic, technological, social changes underway create new risks for areas such as employment, equality, as well as poverty in many of the BRICS countries. It is quite heartwarming to hear you as business people, as one listened to Mr. Chabalala's report, also focusing on issues such as poverty reduction and elimination and inequality as well. It isn't often that you hear such very positive and forward-looking messages from the business community. So it's wonderful to be in a forum under the ages of BRICS that you as business leaders are in tune with the developmental agenda that needs to be pursued to lift the people who live in BRICS countries and beyond out of the ravages of poverty and inequality. We therefore call on the business community to join hands with us to identify solutions to these and many other challenges affecting our respective economies. From a South African perspective, there is massive untapped potential for investment in our country and indeed on the African continent as well. In recognition of this potential, the theme for this 15th BRICS Summit is BRICS and Africa, part, BRICS and Africa the Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development, and Inclusive Multilateralism. Africa is a continent of great opportunity in industrialization process in a variety of sectors. This continent is rich in the critical minerals that will drive business success in the 21st century. The continent has resources of lithium, vanadium, cobalt, platinum, palladium, nickel, copper, rare earth minerals, rhodium, and many others. And these are the minerals that are bound and are driving economic activity across the world. African countries have made it clear that the investors of choice are those who will come and invest in our continent, but also process the resources here close to source so that African countries do not 
export rock and sand, but export finished products as we would like to do. That was uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa there addressing the uh, leaders' uh, dialogue, uh, the business forum there. Uh, I mean, some of the pointers, as you heard, that, uh, you know, talking about uh, uh, foreign investment uh, that has played uh, an important role in the growth of uh, BRICS economies there. Just talking about uh, the total annual foreign direct investment uh, into the BRICS economies, uh, saying that it's four times bigger uh, than it was 20 years ago. And uh, also, you know, BRICS economies uh, have emerged as powerful engines uh, of uh, global um, uh, growth, uh, calling on uh, also the business uh, community to join hands uh, in order to bring solutions to challenges affecting the BRICS economies. I mean, we're looking at uh, rapid economic, uh, technological and uh, social changes that are happening in the different countries that are forming part of the BRICS blog. He touched on uh, Africa's uh, partnership with BRICS, you know, for accelerated growth, uh, development and inclusion of uh, multilateralism. Those are some of the key issues that President Cyril Ramaphosa did uh, talk about. But for now, we're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, we're coming back with more just after this. Welcome to this uh, special edition of Soweto Today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tabo Malukwane. We are on at the second day of the 15th BRICS Summit. Uh, the, you know, earlier on today, uh, the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Hossein Ramokhopa, uh, signed a joint memorandum of uh, uh, cooperation with uh, eight Chinese entities, you know, on behalf of the South African government. Uh, but, you know, he touched on various issues, saying that uh, it's very important for uh, the South African government to work with speed in addressing, you know, the challenges that we are facing, particularly, you know, as he said that he is willing, uh, you know, uh, to uh, build uh, those uh, infrastructure so that we can have sustainable uh, energy here in the country. Uh, the minister is joining us now just to, you know, give us a sense of um, what the agreement entails and also what what is our focus particularly looking at uh, you know how far we've come since uh, his appointment he's joining us uh, just now minister thanks very much for taking the time and uh, welcome to soweto today no thank you very much and uh, greetings to the usa back at home much appreciated minister i want us to start about uh, the importance of uh, the agreement, uh, you know, how important is it, um, particularly looking at the challenges that we are facing as a country? I mean, since your appointment, you said that, look, we're going to try by all means to get uh, the necessary generation capacity that we need as a country. Well, I think it's important that in the quest to resolve uh, one of the biggest existential uh, challenges that has faced the country uh, post-apartheid, uh, we need to look to people who have uh, the necessary experience. Uh, I mean, uh, why China? Uh, they've also had uh, some degree of load shedding some time in the past. China has got uh, the biggest installed capacity of uh, renewable energy, about 688 gigawatts, just to put it into context. That's almost like uh, 12 size, uh, the 12 times rather the size of uh, ESCOM, but just on the on the renewable side. The biggest uh, installed capacity with regards to nuclear, 31 uh, gigawatts. Uh, there's uh, about 20 gigawatts that is uh, under, under construction. There they are now deploying some of the latest technologies on the transmission side. Um, uh, they've modernized the, the transmission side. They've been able to accelerate uh, the connection of uh, new consumers uh, uh, onto the grid uh, at a, a rapid pace, uh, faster than any other person could uh, succeed. The configuration of their grid is the same as ours. Uh, like ours, we are concentrated in the northern parts, northeastern parts of the country in Pumalanga because that's where you find the fuel source, which is coal, and that's where the coal-fired power stations are. But to the south, you have little or to uh, great capacity, the Western Cape, uh, Eastern Cape, and Northern Cape. And those are your provinces, really, that gives you an opportunity to uh, ramp up uh, PV and, uh, and and also wind, but they don't have great capacity, and therefore we can evacuate the electrons. So it's important that we, we, we really have these conversations with them, and not just conversation, but take it to a next level. We are able to codify the relationship and uh, get to a stage where we get to implement. And, uh, and this will be important 
important uh, because uh, it is going to help us to learn from those who have experienced the same problems, how they've resolved that challenge and the speed with which they've been able to resolve that and the financing of uh, some of those solutions. So this uh, was very important for me, it's momentous. It really takes this um, efforts of ours to resolve load shedding into a higher gear and you are going to see rapid improvements in relation to generation capacity and the intensity of load shedding. I want us to touch on, uh, you know, uh, the donation by uh, the Chinese government. You spoke about, uh, you know, just over 500 units and you said that just over 400 are in transit now. Uh, you know, how important is that? I mean, you, you've taken it upon yourself saying that, look, uh, you know, key institutions actually need to be exempted from load shedding. How important, uh, you know, how important? How important will these units, you know, uh, make a difference, particularly on these institutions such as clinics? We know what's been happening, particularly in townships, uh, you know. No, absolutely correct. I mean, um, the poor are disproportionately affected and those that are outside the major economic centers, uh, uh, they don't get the, the social services uh, sometimes as a result of load shedding. So clinics, you find that you can't keep uh, the temperatures of uh, a medicine that requires refrigeration. It compromises their efficacy and therefore the health of, uh, of patients in those areas. Uh, police stations, again, putting officers and communities at risk because there's no load shedding. And I'm sure it's got implications on safety, the ability of police to, to enforce. Uh, uh, you, you go to uh, hospitals, that uh, is still the case. And as you know, not all hospitals are exempted about 137 of them are not exempted so this is really tangible so the Chinese say there is no conditions all they ask from us what are the specifications we gave the specification and say look these are the 552 units we can give you it also include uh, uh, what we call power vehicles these are mobile generators if you like as and when is required you can take it to this facility plug it in and let the facility run it, it includes a storage facility inverters and batteries uh, uh, supported by PV, so you can really make sure that the um facilities are free of the grid. They'll continue to be connected to the grid uh, uh, because we can't be complete off the grid, but a large part of their energy requirements, especially those that they uh, operate uh, uh, morning to afternoon, they close. Then you have the, uh, um, the, the, the possibility or the availability of the sun, benefit of the sun, they're able to generate their own uh, cap um, uh, gener capacity and they're able to store that as and when they need it, they can draw from that storage capacity. So in or you can uh, will be able to connect over although the units are 552 some of them will put them in combination so we can do up to if you like uh, 300 to 350 of these uh, uh, clinics hospitals and police stations and that's where we are going to just lastly before i let you go um, minister you spoke about uh, you know the goal is, uh, you know, to make sure that we have uh, sufficient generation capacity as a country. And you're saying that, look, uh, by the end of the year, I'll make sure that at least we have close to 8,000 uh, megawatts of, of, of electricity in the country. How far are we, you know, in terms of stabilizing the grid? I know that, uh, you know, you have explained uh, in your previous briefings that it's going to take a few stages uh, for us to get to where we want to be because we also need to build uh, you know, infrastructure that will be able to assist the country. Um, how do we assure that citizen who is, you know, in the township like Soweto, in Tembisa, in Alex, you know, telling them that, look, we are as government working to deal with this uh, electricity crisis? Well, maybe just to put the 8,000 into context, so when I was appointed, uh, we we're averaging about uh, 25,000 uh, megawatts or so. Now, as I speak to you, I add 28,000 megawatts, so we added 4,000 megawatts, essentially as a result of the improvement of the performance of the installed units. We are expecting that there's a number of units that will come from a few power stations, including Tutuka, sometime in uh, say, September. They should give us uh, about 1,000 680 megawatts and of course we are firing a unit at the Kusile unit 5 and then the three units at Kusile will come on that firing unit 5 is in October the three units the last of the three units will come on stream 
by 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 uh, uh, 24th of December. So if you look at the three, they give you approximately 2,400 megawatts or so, and then the the one unit uh, five, if you add that 800, 3,200 megawatts, and then there's a 1,500, the 600 plus megawatts you'll get from Tutuga and other power stations. You put together, you're already sitting at 4,800. And I did say that as I speak to you from that time of uh, we appointed to now we have added 4,000 megawatts. When you put it together, is that 8,000 megawatts? So you are going to get to a situation where you are going to find that uh, the lights will be on 24 hours of the day most of the time, uh, going into December, early next year. But you have not resolved the major problem. Of course, that's the first step. It's a necessary step. But the economy needs to grow. And the rate of new generation capacity, that growth should be higher than the economic growth. Because it's the one that is going to um, uh, anchor uh, the growth of the economy. It's the one that's going to catalyze it. And that's why we need the, uh, the gas uh, um, um, uh, power. We need uh, the issues around the additional uh, generation capacity of renewables. We need to address the transmission side so that we are able to connect the electricity onto the grid and we are finally out of a load shedding situation. Minister, thanks very much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. That's uh, Electricity Minister Dr. Hossein Tsuramohopa just giving us, you know, an outlook of what is it that we can expect, particularly, you know, highlighting the importance of uh, getting that necessary generation capacity to the national grid. Um, as you know, that uh, he said that, look, 4,000 has already been added to the grid uh, currently, and by at least December, we will have as much as, uh, you know, close to 8,000 to uh, megawatts uh, to the grid, saying that look the key is to make sure that um, you know we have the lights on in the country well that's uh, how we're going to uh, you know take uh, a quick ad break here on uh, Soweto today we are coming with more just on the other side Welcome back. You're still watching your special broadcast of uh, Soweto today. Uh, we are coming to you from the Santin Convention Center as we've been bringing you proceedings here uh, on uh, day two of the summit. Quite a lot of things have been happening uh, as we speak. Uh, now, you know, there is uh, currently uh, the BRICS members, uh, they are having closed meetings. We know that uh, also some of the delegates, they are engaged in some of the discussions. We know quite a lot of issues. Um, are on the table, the issue of the new BRICS currency, uh, the issue of the new development bank and also uh, the expansion of the block which is on the cusp. Hopefully we will get the feedback uh, by uh, tomorrow uh, morning as the uh, proceedings unfold here at the Ascenton Convention Center. Well, let me tell you what's going to be happening uh, tomorrow uh, on the last day of the summit. The Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, that uh, Naledi Panda, will be uh, directing the program, uh, which is expected to begin at nine in the morning. Uh, you know, statements will be given by the heads of state uh, just around half past nine, also uh, in the morning. We're also looking at statements being given by the likes of the African Union, the president of the New Development Bank, and uh, the president of the African Development Bank. There, uh, we know that um, you know there's an issue of um, BRICS and uh, Africa strengthening the mutual beneficial partnership for growth, uh, development, peace and uh, inclusive uh, multilateralism uh, as we spoke about that uh, earlier on, on the show as well as uh, you know a question and answer session uh, that uh, is going to be had uh, by um, the BRICS bloc members uh, with some of the media people you know asking of particularly what would be uh, some of the resolutions in this uh, 15th uh, BRICS uh, summit. That's uh, what's expected uh, to happen uh, basically tomorrow. We heard earlier on, uh, we did speak to the um, Minister of um, Electricity, Jose Enzo Ramachopa, the good doctor himself, you know, just talking about uh, their plans to deal with the, the energy crisis in the country, particularly looking at, you know, adding more capacity to the grid, uh, saying that, look, by the end of December, at least they will have around 8,000 megawatts. Um, also talking about the issue of the um, units that are in transit from China, 
um, just around 420 units that will definitely assist institutions such as clinics, police stations, so that we don't have uh, the load uh, shedding and stuff. So we will be giving you those updates uh, tomorrow, uh, including the opening address also, I mean the closing address by uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. As we know that South Africa is the host. Remember we love um, you know, hearing from you on this episode. Simply just send us an email at uh, Soweto Today at Soweto TV or you can simply just um, send us a WhatsApp or just give us a call 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team here at the Sentin Convention Center, it's a very good evening.